Welcome back to the channel, you guys. It's really awesome to have you here once again. Today, we have a great video in store for you. As you know, our channel is centered around everyday carry, gear, and adventure. But a big part of that is how I convey those passions to you. And that involves picking up a camera, vlogging, shooting, editing, and posting it on YouTube. Today, my friend Chris is coming over. Chris is about to bust through those doors right now, so let's get to it. <laughs> Mic is on. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, glad you can make it. All right, It's man. been, what, two months in the making? This is Chris. I met him at my buddy Mike's wedding. They got married last... Last year, October. I have those videos. I've been meaning to edit it. Yeah, I don't remember too much of that. <laughs> all weekend. For I do better, remember Ron, though. <laughs> yeah. And I said, I want to work with this Oh, guy. we were Pixel Buddies. That's right. You That's got right. yours? You got yours, man? Of course, man. Of course, here we go. Cheers. <laughs> Well, here we are, we're doing our joint video. It's been two months in the making. We're doing this thing called a B-roll challenge. So basically what that is, is we are both tasked to make a 30 second video. We pick one topic, in this case it was sneakers. You know, we were both fans of, you know, cool kicks, design aesthetics, and just having really cool sneakers, so. Yeah, there were really no rules. It was kind of let your creativity flow, and then we'll see where this goes. I guess I got into, you know, shooting and taking film and stuff just from watching YouTube videos, you know, the likes of Peter McKinnon, Matty Apoya, Daniel Schiffer. Daniel Schiffer, that guy right there is legit. Slick, I, right? I try and steal a lot of his editing <laughs> techniques, his shooting techniques. And you'll see it in the video to come. That's right, that's right. <laughs> Photography is something that uh, I've learned all, you know, self-taught. It's something that just has grown and it's turned into videography now, and now I want to expand on that, so. That's pretty cool. I mean, it's a great way to kind of like express your ideas, right? Yeah, it's, it's a great way to capture it and to share your perspective with other people who obviously don't see things the way you see it and you want to show them something a little different. Yeah, for sure. Well, okay, let's stop stalling. Let's just roll the first video. So we're going to show Chris's video first. All right. All right, let's do it. Yeah, okay, okay, got some chops. That was pretty dope. We're gonna roll my video now, and then afterwards, we're gonna do a little reaction from each of us on our own respective videos. So, here is mine. There's something to be said about the aesthetic of a sneaker the concept, the form, the pattern, and the lines, datums broken and unbroken. That's why so many collectors keep their footwear in such good condition to fully appreciate its design. So why is this pair so beat up? To put it simply, kicks are made for stepping. So that was Ron's video. Obviously, the storytelling is there. Cinematics, <laughs> cinematics are there for sure. All right, so now we're gonna go into my reaction to his video. We both filmed our real-time reactions like right on the spot. We gave ourselves a deadline, and it was like what November first? Or no, 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 September. This was, I think, this was back in September. We had to finish by the end of September. Okay. Spent October, early October is when we gave each other the files. Yeah. And since then, since the beginning of October, we've been trying to get together just to film this portion of it and just you know expand on what we. We've learned and, and the whole idea of the b-roll challenge so here is my reaction to Chris's video we've got the video queued up he's probably filming his real-time reaction video right now too so this is gonna be sick I'm freaking excited are we ready are you guys ready we're about to play this right now oh man 
Nikes. Good choice. Ooh. Oh man. Hey, size nine, nice. Ah, the AJ ones. Oh man. Oh, dude. Oh, the glitch. Glitch effects dope. Oh, the Audi fam. I do not have an Audi. Oh, see, I told you. Love for basketball. Ooh. Let's go. Ooh. Hey, is that a mini basketball? <laughs> hey, the dunk. Ooh. How oh, sick. Ooh, the mask. Oh, that's sick. That's gonna be, that's gotta be his intro from, from now on, man. Oh, sh Oh, man. That's sick, bro, you killed it. I, damn, you knocked me out of the water, man. That's sick. I love the creative style of that. It was really awesome, those, those beats, those hip hop beats. I really like how his name, Chris David Vlogs, is masked behind his legs. So when he motions over, it goes up for the layup slash dunk or whatever he's doing, it reveals the title as he goes across. But damn, dope stuff, man. That's sick. Woo. This is my reaction to watching his video for the first time. All right, B-roll, edit, download. We have similar kind of style, I think. I can already see that it's very uh, cinematic looking just from the initial shot here. Put these on. All right, here we go. First time watching this. There's something to be said about the aesthetic of a sneaker. The concept, the form, the pattern and the lines, datums broken and okay. unbroken. That's why so many collectors keep their footwear in such good condition to fully appreciate its design. So why is this pair so beat up? To put it simply, kicks are made for stepping. <laughs> oh, I like the cut in with the music. Okay, so I think he filmed this when he was on vacation. Oh man, that's nice. Okay. I like the cuts, I like the travel. Let's start that again. I gotta watch this again. There's too much going on. There's something to be said about the aesthetic of a sneaker. The concept, the form, I think he filmed this with the pattern phone. and the lines. Datums oh, no, broken and unbroken. I think he filmed this with, uh, that's why so many collectors keep their DSL. footwear in such good condition to fully appreciate its design. I'm not sure. So why is this pair so beat up? I don't know what he filmed this with. To put it simply, kicks are made for stepping. I like where he's going with it. Kicks are made for stepping. Okay. Stepping all over the world, let's see it. Some after effects. I think we both have the same shot where we where we land. We jump into the shot, highlighting the shoes, walk away. Yep. Love it, love it. I like this, I like this project. I wanna do it again. Great video. So <clears throat> I've said this before, I think I said this in my original reaction video. I love this challenge because it forces me to do something different, something that I don't usually do on my uh, my vlog style videos. Also, I get to pick his brain because I know he has a creative mind and, and the stuff that he's been putting out on his channel right now is just, it's, oh man, it's clear content that tells a good story, but it's informative as well and the oh. graphics are just on point. Just production quality. Uh, nice. Thanks, man. Thanks for the, uh, thanks for the name drop. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I, I decided to do YouTube like not too long ago. I have maybe like five, six videos up right now. Uh, basically, the channel is about everyday carry, gear, and adventure, and I just picked topics that I was passionate about. And then I just channeled that through, you know, the passion that I found for uh, cinematography and, you know, like the little details and techniques I learned from that. What do you feel that you picked out for this challenge that you can either develop more or something that you learned? Uh, I think for this challenge, what was really cool was that it kind of, kind of put the blinders. You know, it, it's kind of ironic actually because we're talking about creative freedom, but at the same time, the fact that we had a, a topic that we were bound to, even though it was very open-ended and there was, you know, you can shoot in any style, use any equipment that you wanted, the fact that you had to hone in on a certain topic that may or may not be, uh, you know, your wheelhouse. Like, for example, mine is all about, you know, gear, but then sneakers, you could say that's gear, yes, but, you know, depending on how you took it, I went for a more artistic kind of feel for my video. 
And so I really pushed myself to kind of do something that I don't normally do. And with that, I think, you know, I'm sure you can attest to that, but you learn a lot about yeah. like, I had, to, I had to look up just different techniques on how I wanted to cut together these individual clips and how this is going to progress. Um, like I like I said, I took a little longer. I did twice the length of what he did. Um, <laughs> Not twice. I ended but... up. <laughs> uh, how about you? What was your main takeaway? Uh, my main takeaway was that I am not using Premiere Pro to the to the max. You know, there, there's, I'm using like five percent of of the capabilities of the program. Um, I really dug into editing technique and filming techniques. And Daniel Schiffer, you mentioned him. Yeah. That guy has some really good tips. Uh, and, and editing. I, I like the uh, behind the scenes stuff that he that he cuts together and shows mm. the thought process. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like he'll show you like the finished result, you know, very pristine, very awesome. And then afterwards he'll dive into, okay, for this shot I did exactly this with this gear yeah. using this motion. I tried to copy some of his things. Mm -hmm. I mean, not, not as no, good, very successfully, they, actually. They, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. You know, his <laughs> zoom cuts and you know his in-camera transitions that you saw in that B-roll challenge was on point. Like for real. Thank you. Good thank stuff, you. man. Did you want to get into gear? Oh was yeah, it, that's right. Like just planning, yeah. logistics. Yeah, I just took. I I just for the for the trip itself, I just took like a travel setup, if you will. Uh, I was just you know the body, two lenses, one wide, one uh, more compressed, and uh, the mic. Oh, so yeah, that was one, in my reaction. You'll see that I'm like. I think he shot this with the with his phone. <laughs> and then, no, I think he shot this with the that DSLR. bad, huh? No, that I think bad. it was a mirrorless. <laughs> <laughs> you can you can get away with some things with this pixel. Oh yeah, no, no. We, but yeah. eventually, I was like, I have no idea what this guy's shooting with, but it looks good. Um, yeah. So yeah, you were shooting with the SL2. Yeah. So the Canon uh, Rebel SL2, and then uh, over the year, I've picked up a wide Sigma 10 to 20 millimeter, as well as a couple of you know the quote unquote famous one like the nifty 50 and the 24 pancake yeah there you go the wide angle is definitely good on travel video you know you can yeah you can get such a such a wide point of view and mm -hmm. um, big old photography landscapes. wise yeah, yeah for yeah. sure for sure and then you know on the flip side vlogging is real good with that too i tried yeah. so the, the shortest one i had was the 18 kit and i was holding oh, yeah. it like <laughs> out here i tried to get artsy with it i was like oh geez the 24 but that SL2 is a crop sensor, and so the 24 millimeter was actually like a 36. Yeah. So I'm holding it like, please <laughs> stretch your arm out. Please as far get as my you can. my face in frame, you know. And it was terrible, but when I picked up that Sigma 10 to 20, shooting it full open was, you know, butter. It was awesome. Yeah. Well, okay, how about you, man? What was your setup? Uh, when I was shooting, it was actually with what we're shooting with right now, mm -hmm. which is a 5D Mark IV. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was a mixture of that. I tried to use my point and shoot, my Sony RX100. That came in clutch for any kind of slow-mo footage, especially at 120 frames per second. That's really cool, man. Uh, and it's uh, like I'd have them set up side by side, and I'd, if I just had uh, both of the same shot, at least one of them I can slow down. Ah, so you have the flexibility, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, as far as some of the panning shots, most of that was done in post. I shot in 4K for a majority of it. Uh, there's this one kind of ghetto dolly I made. It's made out of like four pieces of wood. Oh, you want to talk about ghetto? We'll show yeah. you. Oh, we'll show you this <laughs> setup in a little bit. But anyway, it was set up with like um, like wheel like coasters I got from uh, from Home Depot, and I just put a screw on it, put the tripod oh, nice. head on it, and I just kind of rolled it around, and that's how you got the uh, circular pan. Oh, that's on sick. One man. of those shots. Um, and yeah, I think we both edited it in Premiere Pro. Yeah. So that, that was uh, the concept between us. The other thing, like logistically for shooting this video, I get home about 6.30, it gets nighttime. Like at the, when we were shooting, it was still, uh, what was that, September. So oh, I probably had like 30 out. minutes, 30 yeah. minutes of light out. Sunset. So I'd run home. I actually shot that whole video in like, uh, like three or four different days. So I had these clothes, I just kept having to put them on. <laughs> Make sure I had the same shirt on, yeah. same, same hat on, or whatever. I didn't even notice that. So yeah. Shot over multiple days or I think you'll, if yeah. you look real closely, they're two different white shirts. Okay. But yeah, like I'd have to rush home, put on the put on the clothes, and um, run outside and set the cameras up. I'm like, oh crap! I got a couple couple attempts at this dunk. Yeah, I, and I had to stop myself. I told you, like, I wanted to keep reshooting things. Uh, to to a point, I'm a perfectionist. So I want to like, ah, this little this little shot was off a little bit. So let me reshoot this. Yeah. Um, and then keep throwing in more, more editing techniques. And it's like I gotta call it quits. This, this challenge is getting beyond. <laughs> That's an important started. part too. Yeah. Like going into it, like if you have a certain idea that you want to try and pull off, 
give yourself a timeline, you know, budget a uh, time for yourself to do it. You know, like you say, you took multiple days to get that one shot, but you know, if you if you were meticulous, which is a good thing, being detail oriented and thorough is really good, but you know, if you get kind of pigeonholed into doing the one idea and you want to refine it in version two, version three, version 10, you're never gonna get done, you're never gonna post it and yeah. you know, it's, it's never gonna progress. Yeah. So I'm glad we, we set the deadline. It was, I mean, we went beyond it like a day or two, but yeah. the, the deadline really helped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're definitely gonna do more of these challenges, I'm sure, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, all in all, challenge successful. I think we got two really different perspectives on the same topic, and I think we both had a lot of fun shooting, editing, putting everything together. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I definitely wanna do more stuff like this. Um, I've learned so much, and um, we, we, we gotta do more challenges. Oh, yeah. For sure, this is definitely not gonna be the last one. Well, Chris and I are really glad that you guys were able to take the time to watch this video. If you like to see more stuff just like this, I know it's a little outside the wheelhouse of everyday carry and gear, but it's all tied into, you know, shooting, making YouTube videos like this, and the gear and equipment associated with that, and our mindset behind it. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you drop a like and subscribe if you wanna see more content just like this, and we will see you in the next one. Later. <laughs> oh, it turned out right there! <laughs>